Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to FX021. So in this tutorial I'm gonna teach you how to make this uh, fireman in Houdini. So we're gonna cover uh, we're gonna cover how do you turn your model to these uh, procedural uh, mummies like they have these bandages on them. So we're gonna pr uh, create it procedurally and we can I'm gonna teach you how to make these uh, sparks so you know how to make these sparks after your fire simulation and also the fire here uh, how do you make the fire soon so yeah uh, let's get started so in this first video, I'm going to cover the uh, procedural mummy. So yeah. So as you can see here, uh, I got this uh, zombie model from Sketchfab, I think. So and they have this uh, working animation. Okay. And uh, so now we're gonna make some uh, bandage on them, okay? So let's go to the first red. Uh, he is a T pose, but if it's okay if your model's first frame is not T pose, you can maybe your model is first frame is like this. You can also follow this tutorial, okay? So uh, first we're gonna time shift. So uh, the time shift well. Uh, the default time shift is uh, is like this. So if you uh, right click and delete channels, it will freeze at the frame one here. So now, if you scrap your timeline, so the model will not move. Okay, so we want freeze our models here, and we want to scatter. So it will scatter some points on the model, and uh, then we create some grid and copy to point. So as you can see here, and then we run an intersection analyze here. Now you can see this these lines. So it's it's the intersect part uh, between our model and this uh, grid. So. They create these lines here so just connect your uh, grid to the left input and your time shift the model to the right input input so yeah it will create these lines and the reason why we time shift of our model is because if your model has animation and you want to scatter point on it uh, let's and if you play your animation, you can see your point are moving with the animation. You know, you can see the point are different. So that's why we time shift our model. So now this point are stable, and then we point deform our. Oh, we will wrap this point onto our uh, model that has animation. So that's why we time shift here. So now we have the these intersect lines. Uh, it's pretty much down. Okay. So uh, in vellum post process, we have these extrude by thickness. You can also use sweep node, but I find it's uh, it's not working very well. Also, you can try the poly uh, wire. Uh, these will all make your lines uh, turn into polygons. So if you create a line here and use a sweep node, uh, choose like maybe run tube, yeah, and you have this uh, parameter here to change column, and you can also apply scale. Yeah, you maybe you wanna. Well, it's not changing okay because we don't have enough polygons so yeah you can you can use sweep node if it's working for you 
Also, you can use the poly wire, which is the same. Change the radius. Uh, maybe too much here. Yeah. So you can try uh, sweeping the poly wire, but I'm using the venom probe process here, which is works the best for me. So you can extrude uh, by thickness, thickness, and you can play around with these values here. Okay. So now you got this, and uh, also I have these clean up node poly pass. You can connect these endpoint because the result from here is not not ideal. Like maybe you have these uh, some point uh, like overlapping or like there are single point uh, that's not in in the line. So you can use the poly pass to uh, clean it and uh, use a resample node. So the resample node now you can see like. Uh, these edges might be a little bit jagged, so you can use a resample node to, you know, smooth it a little bit, okay? This is before this, after resample node. So in the resample node, you can see we have much more uh, point count on these curves. So you can, like, uh, adjust the value here, okay? Or you can change it to subdivision curves or straight, straight edges, uh, whichever the best work for you. Okay, so now volume post process. I have shown you that. Now you can see the uh, the normals are reversed. So we're gonna reverse our normal here. Okay, now it's looking better. Um, the one thing is that uh, if you look closely, uh, these are like a single uh, grid. So there is no uh, sickness, sickness of it. So there is no sickness for your bandage. And uh, I think if we render this, it will look bad. So, so I just probably extrude a little bit, like uh, 0 0.001 here. So now you can see we don't have these uh, reverse normals because we probably extrude them. And now we're gonna uh, the the bandage zombie mummies are finished, okay? But they are not moving because we time shifted. So now we want to uh, apply this uh, bandage uh, to our uh, working cycles here. So this model has working cycle, and uh, our first frame has the bandage. So now we're gonna use a point deform here, okay? So point deform, they have uh, it has three inputs. The first one is the mesh to deform. It's obvious. Uh, it's clearly uh, like this one. So the bandages one go to the first input, and the second one is set uh, rest point. So the rest point is the one we time shifted. So it's the, this model, okay? It's the original model. Uh, but we time ship with without the animation, so we connect this to the second input, and the third input is the deform point. So deform point is our model has animation. So this is the third input. So now after we connect these three, now if we play, you can see our model. So that's pretty much it for our. Uh, bandage mummies. Uh, this is pretty pretty simple, but downside of it is the uh, they they are lots of them are overlapping, uh, so you can't really run a venom simulation on it because there are too much overlapping. Uh, what you can do is maybe you can uh, scatter some point here and here and then copy some grid on it so you only simulate these copied uh, copied grid so it feels like these are part of the bandage and you can simulate only that part and uh, it will be like lighter for your simulation so yeah so that's pretty much it thanks for watching